Alright guys, so today I got another one of these DVD players that doesn't want to play. Well actually, this one does play discs. Um, it just skips or it, it stalls. And it also takes a very long time to load the disc. Um, so I don't know what the history on this one is. The, uh, the feet are... You know, the, it's been... <laughs> it might, might have been in some heat because the pad is the... The tape has actually moved. This one's missing. So maybe it's stored in an attic or something. I don't know. The uh, remote. I was going to use the remote, but I don't know if you can see that. There's a... Uh, Batteries are leaking, so I'll have to deal with that. I didn't even take these out yet. And no, the remote does not work with those batteries. I assume the remote, once that's cleaned out, will work just fine. But this one, like I said, it uh, disc skips if it'll even load a disc. Sometimes it says it's a bad disc. I've tried multiple. And uh, and this is common. This is common on a lot of DVD players. So if you have this problem, uh, maybe this video will help you out. I take it apart. Oh, the other thing is I noticed when I first got it, I plugged a uh, video cable into it. And then when I disconnected it, it ripped the shielding off. So I just kind of wedged it back in there, but maybe we'll fix that. So um, I'll take it apart and maybe it just needs cleaning. I don't know. And we'll uh, fire it up and see what it does. It's much more interesting watching the disc spin and everything else versus uh, you know, staring at a black box. It's very simple. You got a small power supply over here. Actually, everything looks just from first sight. Everything looks pretty good. And then you got the uh, control board, video circuitry, and all that back here. So let's turn it on. And let's give it uh, some video. And I do have some DVD test discs, but uh, this is the DVD we'll be using. It's, it is nice and clean. Sharknado. Terrible, terrible movie, but it's a good test, test disc. And, uh, but yes, the DVD-Rs, or the DVD-RWs, whatever they happen to be, uh, don't usually make good test discs for proving that something works or doesn't work. Actually, for working, but not so much for not working. So we usually just sit here at the loading screen and eventually say either bad disc or it'll load. And if it does load... It'll be real choppy. It's actually working better than it usually does. And you can kind of actually working pretty good now. It didn't work before. See, there you go. Yeah, see, now it's skipping. So, yeah, okay, it's doing better than it usually does, but you see it still isn't working right. It's still skipping occasionally. So it means it's just at the edge of, you know, barely barely able to focus or read the disc. So it's either a focusing issue or um, the laser is not uh, emitting enough light. I guess first things first, let's just try to clean it. So I'm going to unplug it and we'll just pull this out. itself looks clean but let me get a cut and swab here I'm gonna be careful not to scratch it but unless it's glass it won't scratch that easily and let's see if that if that did anything where's that Let's 
Still taking a long time to load the disk. Usually they're in by now. So this is what it usually does. Takes forever. DVD video. I can still see it drop in frames. It's still skipping. And by the way, the uh, stuff at the beginning of this disc is all previews. So, no, I'm not playing the movie, I'm just playing the previews. It's actually looking pretty good. I wonder if that's all it needed. Let's pop it out, try it again. skip in there. trying to focus so yeah no, I think uh, I think you see what I'm talking about it um, it's not the most reliable thing and it looks like it's it's on its way out so we tried cleaning it and the transport seems to work just fine it it spins there's no missing missing teeth here let's do this all right so there's the transport or the well the gears for it. And you can see the actual all the teeth on the gears look good. Nothing's missing. It turns freely. I'll show you this one here. The grease in it actually still looks good. There's some more gears at the bottom there but as I'm turning this, I mean this thing's turning perfectly smooth. No binding whatsoever. So transport's fine. So what's next? Is it not focusing or is it not getting out of flight? So the easiest thing for me to do right now would be to pull the mechanism here out and get to the underside of this here. Here's the laser. And hopefully, as you saw in the previous videos, um, there's a way to manipulate the amount of current that goes into the uh, LED laser and I'm not seeing anything on this side let's move this out further so it may be on the other side of the board hopefully it's not just a soldered in uh, resistor if it is it's no big deal we can deal with that that R1 and R2 that might be it but let me um, pull this mechanism out and go from there. So, okay. Let's try to close it. Close it. So, 
So we got VR CD and VR DVD. So obviously this one is going to be the variable resistor for the CD laser because they actually do use two different um, two different lasers and one for the DVD. So one thing people always ask me from the previous videos, do I always turn the trimmer clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, it's there's a few different ways of finding that out. If you're asking that question, obviously you're not going to want to reverse you know reverse engineer the board or you know go around with a multimeter because well you wouldn't be asking that question if you knew how to do that. And I don't mean that as an insult, just the way it is. So a way to look at it and just say, oh, that's the way it is, or that's the way it probably is, is this. And now follow me here. Think of a water spigot. If you turn it on, just turn it on a little bit, you get a little bit of water. There's a high resistance to flow. In other words, the water can't make it out of the valve. Turn that valve a little bit more, the resistance is lowered, therefore more water comes out, so on and so forth. This is the same way, but with current, with electricity. So let's pretend that this is the side that's ground, and that's the side that's positive, and this is the output. So if this little sweeper in there is touching the carbon at this point, and if this were ground, would mean that it has a higher resistance. In other words, it's harder for the power to get from here to here because it's further away. It has more carbon trace to go through. Not to mention that there's a ground right there. So if we were to turn this clockwise just a tiny little bit, it would be decreasing the resistance and increasing the current, just like a just like a spigot, just like a, a you know water valve. Decrease the resistance, increase the current. So the reason I always say turn it clockwise first a little bit, if it doesn't work, then turn it counterclockwise. Is because if you do it right, you're not going to harm anything, or you shouldn't. Because let's pretend for a second that this is wired backwards, which it's not necessarily backwards, it's just the way it is. Let's say that this is ground and this is positive, and this is the output. And let's say you turn this clockwise. Well, all you're doing at that point, if this is ground and this is positive, you're moving this further away from the positive, therefore, you're increasing the resistance. All that's going to happen is this is going to get dimmer. The laser is going to get dimmer. So if it's not working to begin with, it's really not going to work. Or let's say in this case where it's sporadic, by doing that it'll make it worse. If that's the case, and remember I always tell people to draw a line before they move it, I always tell people then move, if, it, if you turn it clockwise and it gets worse or it doesn't make much of a change, go back to your line and then move it a little bit counterclockwise because if I'm wrong, and this is not ground, and this is ground, let's say, like I said, it's wired backwards, and you turn it, all you're doing is just lowering the power going to the, you know, the, to the laser. You're not hurting anything. And then when you turn it, you know, back to the other direction, and you give it a little bit counterclockwise instead of a little bit clockwise, then you're given more current. But in this case, I'm pretty certain, just by judging the way that these are, you know, orientated, I'm going to say that if we turn this a little bit cl clockwise, it's going to increase the current on here. And again, you, you guys that know how that this all works and everything else, that's great. This video is more or less for people, or this explanation is more or less for people who don't. I'm trying to do this by the... There, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn this Sorry, I don't know how I can do this where you can actually see it. See me do it. There. Just that little bit of much. Just that little bit. Now we're going to see if it makes a difference. If it makes a little, if it does make it better, but it's still not perfect, we can move it a little bit more. If it doesn't do anything or it makes it worse, we go the other direction. But always go clockwise first, and that's why. Because if I'm wrong, and it is wired backwards in your situation, you're not going to do any harm. You're just going to make it worse, but you can always turn it to go back to the, you know, the spot that you had it. Again, if you go too far, 
if it is right and you go too far, you'll burn out the laser. So you just give it a little bit. And also, you know, if you do accidentally burn this out, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't work to begin with. So what's the problem? You would, you know, this is, you'd probably have to replace this whole pickup assembly anyway. So why not give it a shot? If it burns it out even further, whatever, buy a new pickup assembly. You can pick them up eBay. You can find a, a parts. Maybe something doesn't power up, but it played DVDs before. You can pull the parts out of it. Um, AliExpress, I know sometimes you can buy stuff on there. Uh, it's kind of a sketchy site. Uh, DigiKey, you can go to the manufacturer and see if you can order it. A, a lot of times for this kind of stuff, and it's you know older units, I just find parts units. You know, ones that were hit by lightning, and chances are if it was plugged in with a lightning hit, it was working just fine. So this part, you know, would be would be okay. Just the power supply is blown or the motherboard or something like that. So, um, yeah, parts decks. And just don't get a deck that has the exact same problem as you because that part's not going to help you at all. It's working better. Now I promise you, originally this thing was skipping like bad. And like one out of ten times you could actually get it to play the disc. And then of course when I put it on camera it was working just fine. So I want to make sure that this isn't one of those times. Actually it's not skipping at all. Or pausing. Yeah, see now it's playing fine. Let's eject it, put it back in, make sure it does it the same thing again. Yeah, see, it's playing fine now. Or it seems to be. Let's play another DVD. Just pop another one in just to make sure. Can't play uh, audio, but we can at least see if it works. And there we go. this moment okay so I'd say that's a win now that we get that fixed so I just want to take a look at this back panel here and see if there's anything we could do about this because I don't want that popping out again So this is the piece that came off. Let's see if we can get that back off. Yeah. It's on there pretty good now. Now the way these work is it just slides over and there's these little locks. And it looks like that one got bent over. Or are they supposed to be bent over? That's the question. So I'm thinking what I'll do. I don't know how well this is going to work on here. I'm 
You see there's two little prongs that it fits into. I'm assuming that there's some plastic in there that just kind of got uh, worn out over time. Because it's not like it turns and locks or anything like that. So what I did off camera was actually replaced this piece here. Um, the one that was in there was pretty bent up just from being torn off. And um, I replaced it. I get these uh, RCA jacks. You, get them, you can get them in bulk. I get them on Amazon because it's just easier to order from there. And it's the, you know, the red, green, yellow. Um, so I just ripped off the yellow and ripped this part off and just stuck the yellow over top. And the yellow insert kind of flops around a little bit in there, but it's not as tight. Because this, this cap was never meant to go on, you know, on this assembly. But the outer ring um, in this part here, oh, sorry. The outer ring in this part underneath this black let me see if I can get this off. This outer ring here is much larger than what this one had. Actually, this one's non-existent. So when you put the back plate on, it actually clamps it against um, this. And there is a ground plate up front. So this will get grounded. Or it is grounded now. And since it's missing at some of its feet... I'm just going to use these. These are felt furniture pads. These are rubber, so kind of cancels out some vibration. And but being that they're missing, they're they're really not doing anything but add vibration because it's going to rock back and forth. Again, not looking to completely restore this thing. Just trying to make it somewhat usable. So I'm thinking. Two different sizes. That actually fits better, so we'll go with this one. The hardest part about these is getting this back, this back piece off, separated from the actual adhesive, because half the time the adhesive wants to come off with it. And yes, I know I could probably take this crap off. I'm not going to. remote's concerned um, most of the stuff in there was just dried out so I just kind of scraped it out and cleaned it up best I could I don't it's four in the morning I really don't feel like pulling out uh, the vinegar and everything right now so I just cleaned it up and we're gonna stick some batteries in it and uh, we'll see if it works and where is the play button on this well first we can close it oh. batteries weren't in all the way close This is one of the things I do not like about DVDs. You got all these loading screens and you can't skip them and... Let's see if we can switch to a different track. Alright, so chapter 8. Chapter 7. Chapter 6. Where's the main menu button at? Let's go to the main menu. Alright, so you see it's working. So, so that's that. Um, that's the cover for the remote. I'm going to take my batteries back and put it in my other remote. So if you found that interesting or helpful, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, it, it really does help. I do appreciate it. If you have any, uh, if you don't, 
or if it wasn't or you don't you know what to do so if you have any questions comments suggestions um again leave them you know down below i hope you have a great week and i'll see you next time